Hello everybody, and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe to the channel for regular content on ancient architecture, as well as all the latest news from the world of archaeology. For those interested in Gebekli Tepe in the pre-pottery Neolithic, there's some exciting news coming out of Turkey, as 12,000 year old rock engravings have been discovered, but they're currently underwater. The engravings are believed to date back to the Epi Paleolithic, meaning the culture that created them came before the pre pottery Neolithic culture we've come to know so well, aka the people behind the enigmatic Gebekli Tepe, Karahan Tepe, Seybirch, and so on. As stated, the rock engravings are underwater, and this is because of the Ataturk Dam in the Adiaman province submerging areas that were once dry land thousands of years ago. The specific location is near the Bellerin area of Kata in the Adiaman province, and this is very significant, because this site is just 7 miles north of the famous pre-pottery Neolithic site of Navali Chori, which was excavated but is also now underwater. Thankfully some of the site was saved. Shanlerfer Museum has the main rectangular building on display, as well as statues and statue fragments, and there's also an artist's impression model, and this shows how the site would have once looked, and it's based on the findings by archaeologists. Interestingly, the new engravings are found just 33 miles from Gebekli Tepe, yet they look to predate this enigmatic site by a few hundred years. The engravings were first discovered 8 years ago by local fishermen, when drought conditions caused the water level of the Ataturk Dam to drop significantly. This year has also been quite dry, so archaeologists returned to the site to investigate, to see if the etchings had resurfaced once again. Sadly the etchings were underwater, but only by about 1 metre. And this did not stop the archaeologists from investigating. An underwater examination using diving and photographic equipment was undertaken. According to the director of Adiaman Museum, Mehmet Alkan, the rock surface is now covered with layers of mussel shells, making documentation of the prehistoric etchings a real challenge. Talking to the media, Alkan said, quote, Despite the shells, we were able to verify that the carvings remain intact. We plan to clean the area and produce a detailed replica to display at the Adiaman Museum." End quote. For a large part of the year the water level is high and it's apparently near on impossible to reach the site in such conditions. Work can therefore only be undertaken when the conditions are dry and the water level low. And so, this year gave the experts a rare chance to inspect the carvings. Before I go further and discuss the importance of the findings, this video is sponsored by Flexispot, a company who are pioneering kinetic furniture with the goal of empowering people to work smarter and live better. On their website you can see a fantastic range of ergonomic chairs and recliners, but for me it's their standing desks that are really something quite special. This is the Flexispot E7 Pro Desk, where you can raise and lower the height of the desk with a simple touch of a button, and this is now so important to the way I work. When I'm researching, writing and editing my videos I like to sit, but now I'm in my 40s my posture suffers quite a lot because of it. I have to take regular breaks to stretch out, and this can be really annoying when you're right in the middle of something important. Well, my Flexispot desk has really been a godsend. If I can feel my neck aching or my back feeling stiff, I just have to press the preset standing height button on my table, and I can then continue to work standing up and not lose my train of thought. Flexispot standing desks promote better posture, increased energy levels and enhanced productivity, and they really are a genuine ergonomic innovation. The quality is absolutely superb, 
a durable, strong construction, and the metal frame is corrosion resistant. The dual motors operate so smoothly, and they're also incredibly quiet. And if your desk is stacked with a computer, monitor, books, papers, a printer, and so on, it has a load capacity of 160 kilograms, so lifting your entire workspace is no struggle at all. There are four customizable memory presets for quick and easy height adjustment, and there's a built in charging port as well. There's a cable tray to hide power packs and wires, cable clips keep it tidy. And if need be, there's a magnetic cover to allow quick access to the mechanics. Now, if I'm totally honest, I'm not a handyman in the slightest, but I followed the simple instructions and built my E7 Pro Desk in just 15 minutes. So, this may be a sponsored video, but it's also a genuine recommendation. So go check out flexispot.com to browse the incredible state-of-the-art kinetic furniture because I can honestly say it's really changed the way I work for the better. And now back to the video. The newly discovered etchings span an area around 8 meters in length and 70 centimeters in height. So it is really a pretty big canvas of artwork. But it's the contents of the art that should really get us excited. According to the news reports, we see depictions of stylized human figures, some of them with bows and arrows, as well as mountain goats, horses, wolves, foxes, and storks or cranes. They illustrate a vivid hunting scene, believed to represent daily life and spiritual beliefs. The media and the museum are saying they're 12,000 years old, but how this dating has been assigned, I don't know. But, if correct, it really is another important piece of the puzzle. Whilst the etchings predate Gebekli Tepe and Karahan Tepe by a few hundred years, the art displayed, although more primitive in style, looks to have a similar context. If you saw my video earlier this week, I discussed how the animals on the pillars of Gebekli Tepe represent the natural world, ecosystems the real animals found in the local landscape. And, as I discussed in my 2024 video on the same subject, I think the I and H symbols are barriers or animal traps, and they were being used in a wetland environment for hunting, and they showed the way that humans manipulated the landscape for their benefit. Now we have a similar selection of animals on display at an even older site, and it looks as though the scenes relate to ecosystems and hunting. Due to the close proximity of the more famous pre-pottery Neolithic sites, the people that made these etchings could well have been the ancestors of those that would go on to build Gebekli Tepe, maybe a precursor culture, or maybe the same culture. People that lived at the very beginning of the pre-pottery Neolithic. The Ataturk Dam is one of the largest in Turkey, and since it was completed in 1990, it has significantly altered the local landscape. Due to these etchings and also the nearby site of Navali Chori, the dammed water has without doubt submerged a lot of important archaeology. Settlements, buildings, statues, art, and so on. And a lot of the answers we're searching for could well be lost forever. Because over time we have erosion, biological growth and sediment build up, and so we have to thank the fishermen who discovered these etchings 8 years ago, and the archaeologists who are now working to record the engravings. It really is very lucky they've been identified. The archaeologists have emphasised the importance of digital documentation and 3D modelling to preserve the underwater heritage, and future plans have already been made. They are set to conduct a comprehensive cleaning project, high resolution scanning of the carvings, and the creation of a museum replica to make the findings accessible to the public. From the few images and pictures released to the world's media, I've put them into Photoshop and drawn over them the best I can, so I can bring them to life once again. 
OK, what I've done is not so great, but then again I don't have detailed photos to work with. But if nothing else, through the lichen, mussels and sediment, you can get an idea of what lies below the water. And we can see the stick figure like artwork that was created thousands of years ago. And although they are nothing compared to the quality we see on the famous tea pillars, they are in fact very similar in form and style to the more portable art we find in the pre pottery Neolithic the line drawings on rocks and pebbles. Interestingly, according to the website anatoliaarchaeology.net, Similar rock art traditions are also found in Batman, Shanlerfer and Marden, suggesting cultural continuity all the way across Upper Mesopotamia. Now I don't know too much about the rock art found at these locations, and whether it was all produced before the pre-pottery Neolithic, but this is a line of study I'll begin to investigate in the coming weeks. Every year there are new fantastic discoveries in this part of the world, and every year things are starting to make a little more sense, as new pieces of the puzzle are being discovered. Some say the Gobekli Tepe appeared out of nowhere, like it's some kind of anomaly in the archaeological record, but now we know that this really is an outdated opinion. We are now seeing the bigger picture, with dozens of sites now located, some older, some younger, and so in terms of time and space, Gebekli Tepe is exactly where you'd expect it to be. But the sad thing about this amazing new discovery is the amount of lost associated archaeology. I'm sure this 8 meter long rock canvas was just the tip of the iceberg, with possible settlement remains now lost forever. And this wasn't just any settlement, but a precursor to the amazing Gebekli Tepe. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.